Today we have a very special and unique episode that I am confident you are going to love. Make sure you subscribe and enjoy. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast, Thursday, March 28th, Jason Moore, Mike Wright, Andy Holloway. Should be a fun episode. We got a game time episode. It will be. I think this what is, is going to be should an be. awesome episode. It is, uh, but uh, we, we even have the return. Maybe maybe the uh, maybe the final. Yeah, we'll see. Fantasy court in Ooh. history on this wow. show because uh, many of you out there, you do not know, but change is coming to Footballers Studio, not to the Fantasy Footballers Company, I mean, yes to the company, but but not not like <laughs> more to the studio. More yeah. to the studio because today, this day, March twenty eighth, two thousand and twenty four. That's a living infamy. Will be the the final day in studio for Judge Giamatti himself. Brooks is not going to be here after today. And if we if we look, you see he's prepared himself there for. He is. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh yeah, dressed up for fantasy court. He has prepared for his final. It's um, looking good, Judge. Final day at the bench, looking so to good. speak. So uh, Brooks is. I will hold myself in contempt. <laughs> <laughs> Brooks is moving with his wonderful bride uh, back towards the Midwest. Uh, to be to be near some family. He's had enough of the sun. Yeah, he wanted. Silver, he said. I want gray and silver when I look outside and rain to fall upon me. Yeah, and snow and things like that. But no, uh, Brooks has been here for a very, very long time. In fact, I have some Brooks fast facts Ooh, to share with you. But Brooks, would you fun. like to would you like to say anything first to the oh, uh, yeah. to the Foot Clan? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. No, it's just a a weird feeling just being here all this time with you guys and. Uh, it's just weird. I don't know how else to explain it. It's, I'm gonna miss coming in here for the shows every day, and um, but so thankful I get to still be a part of the team. And yes, I'll I'll be reading It'll your be mailbag around. questions. I'll be in Discord, Foot Clan. I'm I'm still right here, part of the team. Just you won't you won't always uh, a baller. You just won't see him in Deucer's Alley, which which um, is just an upgrade for the show. True, you know what I mean. Yeah. Like I mean, you know, it's just one of those things where it's like we already added Papa Josh, which brought us down so far, yeah. and we're like. Brooks, do you want to move to the Midwest? Will you move to the Midwest? Versus There's sitting too next much to Papa bald, Josh. Yeah. Too much bald in Deucer's Alley, and he, he took one for the team. So here here's some fast facts about Brooks before we move nice. forward. Hit me. First show appearance, the first mention of Brooks ever was July 16th, 2015. Oh, man. He was actually the Reviewosaurus Rex. We used to do a segment. Yes, yeah. Where okay. we would share reviews from people uh, who left them on Apple Podcasts. And Jason, you did botch the reading. Of course I did. That's uh, what I do. I'll never forget that. <laughs> yeah? I knew it was what That's you were going to say. Were you remember it? Rex. Oh, yeah. I'll never forget when you read my review on the air and I thought it was the greatest thing. And Yeah. It was. And uh, not long after that, only a week later, we got his submission for the 2015 Listener League. So... Um, it was a great submission. It showed that he was uh, very experienced with uh, videography and uh, a bunch of technical things that we, funny. we needed. And it was funny. And uh, that was the beginning of Brooks. It was back in July 24th, 2015, the Listener League entry. He started doing stuff for the show. Do you want to know his first studio words ever? February 23rd, 2017. <laughs> oh, yeah, I do. <laughs> so episode 355. What? He said, quote, hey, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like Brooks. <laughs> um, so, yes, that does sound like Brooks. He also has assembled at least, uh, this is the number I have, at least 1,200 different show docs for the main show. Okay. 
He's been in studio for 96.4% of the last 1,200 shows. And then on top of that, for those of you that don't understand all of the incredible hard work that goes behind the scenes, footcasts, Sunday live events, DFS podcasts, Dynasty podcasts, random whatever we're doing. If we're filming videos for um, the Ultimate Draft Kit, Brooks has run that almost exclusively since uh, the beginning of the Ultimate Draft Kit and a ton of detail-oriented work here. That's why he is staying part of the team. He will just be part of the team in the Midwest. So that is, uh, you know, we we could not be more. It's not goodbye, but it's like a, it's it's also – Get it's, out of it's here. Just, yeah, it's just get it's out like of get here. Out. Get out. It's like, this isn't goodbye, but literally get, get out get of out. our yeah. – and don't come back. Right. Get out. But this is his final studio show. And we we're going to miss you. Get yeah. out. We're very thankful, and we deal with our grief in different ways, mostly insults. Yeah, mostly insults. A little crying, mostly insults. The crying is normally off camera, but uh, – Thanks so much, guys. Now we need to move on before we have a crying judge. Oh, <laughs> we're gonna get him, this guy. All right, let's uh, let's go ahead and jump into the fantasy court with Judge Diamati. The fantasy court with Judge Giamatti. Plaintiff Mike Wright is accusing defendant Andy Holloway of aggravated disregard for quarterback mobility and youthful potential in young stud Anthony Richardson. You're, you're shaking your head already. Yeah, I, I'm shaking my head already. Go on, Mike. You get to. You're the. Um, you know, you're the plaintiff. This is how the court works. No, it's I, fine. I didn't make the rules. Nobody told me I couldn't shake my head just, sitting over here in the defendant chair. Just to it's s- a bad look, though. Yeah, it's not a great look. It looks really it's like... guilty, man. Yeah, I'm, you're I mean, not the judge, Jason. I'm not the judge. I'm just, you know... That's true. I, I'm you're riding the bailiff. What is it, chair, like the second chair. Uh, just to set the stage here, what it is, these are, the the for Anthony Richardson, the dynasty startup rankings at the quarterback position. Single QB. I mean, it doesn't matter if it's single or... Super flex because just quarterback uh, rankings. Mike has Anthony Richardson as the quarterback four in Dynasty Startup. I have him six. I have him six. I'm not far off there. And Andy has him as the quarterback 11. So Mm. this is where you're being taken to court. Yeah, I've been accused of aggravated disregard for quarterback mobility. And youthful potential. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Mike. Go on, Mike. Make your case to the judge. Uh, he's sitting there in the most beautiful robe. Yeah, he looks fantastic. Yeah, he's ready to judge you. Go on. So here we go. Here's my case for uh, Anthony Richardson, Your Honor, and the jury out there listening. For what we want from our quarterback is we want massive upside. I don't want the. I don't want a guy who's just going to give me some points. I want a quarterback who can win me a week, who can make a difference. And even though we've only seen him for a very brief amount of time, Anthony Richardson has already proven that he has the the size and strength to and the willingness to be a running quarterback, and that is what we need. Historic seasons, that's what we want. Over the last decade, if you look at the 12 best fantasy seasons at the quarterback position, talking truly historic seasons, eight of them, eight of the 12, were from quarterbacks who saw 22% or more of their fantasy production come via rushing. I will repeat that again. Eight of the 12 best seasons of the last decade, 22% or more came from rushing. And a lot of uh, the 22%, that was one of Josh Allen's season. Usually it's closer to 30 or more per, uh, thirty or more for the production of, of how many of their fantasy points come from their legs. We have only seen... Patrick Mahomes, on he's on the list twice. Aaron Rodgers is on the list twice. And then Justin Herbert. Those are the four cases and three quarterbacks who gave us historic seasons without massive rushing upside. And Anthony Richardson in the small sample, which this is ridiculous because it won't be this way, but over 50% of his fantasy points came in a way that involved his legs and his running. And for the, I'm sure there a lot of people are out there. They're hesitant of like, I, should I buy into Anthony Richardson? We only saw him, you know, essentially two full games. I believe he appeared only in four games. I get it. I get the concern for that. But you have to make aggressive moves before before 
players' value skyrockets. Just a couple examples. Lamar Jackson, uh, highly regarded fantasy quarterback, uh, two-time MVP of the NFL. In his rookie year, he started seven games. And in those seven games, he had just six passing touchdowns. Going into the next season, he was a late-round quarterback who turned into a fantasy winner at 36 passing touchdowns, the QB1. Like, if you had gone off of Lamar Jackson's uh, seven games, you wouldn't have seen that coming. Jalen Hurts, his rookie year, he started four games. He completed 52% of his passes. Philadelphia went one and three. There were huge question marks. Can Jalen Hurts actually be the guy? And then, boom, he turns into one of the best quarterback values of in recent memory. So to me, it's you gotta you gotta be aggressive in calling your shot on these guys, and you need the rushing upside. Like I said, only Mahomes, Herbert, and Rodgers have given us those truly elite seasons, and I think that Anthony Richardson, with his legs, he can do that. Your Honor, I'm glad I have this opportunity. I don't even know where to begin with this journey and the irresponsibility of the plaintiff. Uh, you'll notice, Your Honor, that he strategically omitted uh, two exhibits labeled Marcus Mariota and Robert Griffin III from his uh, Jalen Hurts and Lamar Jackson examples. Mariota's first three games, number three, number 22, and number eight at quarterback when his career began in his first three games ever. RG3 was number two, number one, and number eight. And yet to claim that either of those deserves to be a top five selection on those games alone I deem irresponsible in fact I agree with the plaintiff in the fact that Anthony Richardson would certainly uh, have the capability of doing it he can do it but to rank him inside the top five on uh, so few opportunities at the NFL level I I beg the court to consider where the ranking of Anthony Richardson would be if he had finished 19, 19, and 19 in his first three games. Would we conclude that his entire career was over with? Certainly not. You have to say the exact same thing about these performances that the plaintiff clearly outlaid as, look, he had four rushing touchdowns. He also showed that he could be hurt multiple times in a four-game stretch. There is tremendous risk with Anthony Richardson because we simply haven't seen enough of it. I would not crown nor would I have crowned Marcus Mariota or RG3 a top five dynasty quarterback in three games, and I won't do it for Anthony Richardson. Uh, he barely completed, uh, what, 52% of his intermediate passes over those two games. That would have made him 40th best in the NFL. That would have been Bryce Young and Mac Jones level intermediate passes, and his legs will not earn him fantasy points if he is not proven to be a starting quarterback in the NFL. Uh, we still just need to see more. He has the ability, but you you take a tremendous amount of risk. If you want to go trade for him, I think it's a different story than telling people to draft him at number four. I want more rest assured guaranteed production without the injury risk that has presented itself. He's got as many injuries as full games played in the NFL. That's a good one. So, I mean, <laughs> uh, <they're, laughs> the plaintiff breaks in, and I'm not objecting to that. So, look, uh, Burrow, uh, you know, Kyler, Herbert, um, these are players I, I think the plaintiff clearly has behind Anthony Richardson and Dynasty Startup. I just can't do it right now. I have him at, I think, a respectable top 12, number 11 spot, and uh, I think that's all I need to say, Your Honor, and you do look very handsome today. Mm. Mm. Thank you. <laughs> so as, as you've considered such the, the testimony in hand, in this, your final time in the studio, how do you rule? The court rules in favor of defendant Andy Holloway. Oh. Did he forget the gavel? No. <laughs> he just, just no, you the, heard it, right? He did the most Brooks gavel I've ever heard. Yes. If, if you could have heard, if you, I mean, I'm so glad we had the video on that. <laughs> it was just, he took it and he just tapped it once. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, here's what, here's what happened. Here's the real gavel. What? Ow. It's a sound effect, uh, uh, and I okay. unwisely tried to time it. You up. were trying to dub it. You yeah. tried to time you, the sound effect. You went like an anime overdub with the gavel. Didn't, didn't work. All right. Wow. So also, I, why do we just have one? Isn't it always like a yeah. tap, tap, tap? That's more like order that's, in the court. 
Yeah, well, we're yeah. disorderly here, so we that are, makes complete yeah. sense. Yeah, but um, okay. Well, you guys laid it out. Brooks decided it is a little bit too, a little bit too irresponsible to put that kind of faith in such a high selection. Um, I do think you know if you want to play scared, then go ahead and grab the safer options. But the ceilings are what win championships. So, yeah. It's tough. Like, uh, you know, I'm I'm looking at Dak. Dak Prescott, 30 years old, just was unbelievable. I think I think Dak is a tough one. I think Dak is. I have Dak ahead of Anthony Richardson because I believe the next couple of years are going to be really good. But sure. I think that that's where the line that it it makes sense there too. You want if you want to go youth there, I don't mind that. You you just you want uh, Joe Burrow with uh, two season-ending injuries, <laughs> right? Look. <laughs> I don't know what Anthony Richardson is <laughs> going to do. That's the true. That's the true I, reality of my ranking. Is I just don't know. I I don't. It doesn't bother me at all. If if, if like, it's just how do you how do you want to play? I mean, and, you clearly have him ahead of Stroud because of the yes. the rushing prowess, which yes. I, I think that's a debatable situation as well because you don't have him ahead of Mahomes. I guess no. So you so it's like what's Stroud's ceiling? Anthony Richardson. Will he be able to throw the football? They certainly brought, you know, they brought back Michael Pittman. That's a great thing. I do, I want him to stay healthy. I want to see if if the team decides that well, two injuries in two games, maybe we can't let him be what we wanted him to be in full. Maybe sure. it's in eighty yeah, percent. I don't there's know. Just, like, can you actually stop him? Physically, you can stop him by breaking him. <laughs> no, but I'm saying like, if you're like d run less, run less. You're like, yeah, one, maybe not. One, uh, once the actions go. That would be dumb, probably. You just have to play yeah, the odds you, that he won't get hurt. You drafted Anthony Richardson not based off of his completion percentage no. as a collegiate quarterback because then he should not have been, what, the number four overall pick. You drafted him because he's a playmaker and has tremendous upside. So yeah, if he's got staying power, then he'll be worthy of your, your ranking. That's Yeah, it, it's if Richardson has – a strong year, then you are out you, ahead of it. Yeah, you're yeah. being out ahead of it. You you will never get him. Like the price will go, it will it will Bitcoin and go to the moon. If he's bad, it, his price it will come down. But it actually, I bet it'll hold a little bit. There'll be hesitation yep. a little bit. But um, you can see all of the dynasty rankings in the Ultimate Draft Kit. UltimateDraftKit dot com comes with a mobile app. Uh, there's a new dynasty podcast out uh, on Wednesday yesterday. The rookie draft tips, and uh, yeah. we'll be doing rookie previews on the main show mm -hmm. uh, next week because the draft is coming. All right, um, we are going to jump into the news. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> funky news again. Oh. Of course. Well, <laughs> it wouldn't be Brooks's last day in the studio without the funky news drop. NFL owners voted to adopt. <laughs> The XFL's kickoff rules for the 2024 season. These are going to be really fun. You're going to have the – yeah, we can – we can ditch that. Uh, this, the new rules are basically that the, the defense of the kicking team is going to line up down the field, like only, only five yards away from the offensive receiving team's uh, front line. And it'll, in theory, and, and I think practically speaking, it, it, it proved this out with the XFL, it should lower injury risk, allowing teams to actually kick the ball to the other team where they have to for then a, run for it a back. Play. For yeah, a play. I, I'm going to get my snacks a little sooner now. Yeah, and, and so they – Because I want to watch this. They've even penalized now uh, or, or incentivized, whichever way you want to look at it, if you kick the ball out of the back of the end zone and say, well, you don't get to run the ball back – now the other team gets the ball at the 30-yard line. So there should be – it should be a play worth watching. You know, it's funny. You talk about the NFL kickoff, and you think about that first moment of the year when the ball uh, is kicked oh, off the tee. And oh, it's like, oh, that's just a ceremony, yeah. ceremonial play that means nothing. Yeah, it, you know, the whole transformation of the kickoff, which I believe – it's funny because if you look historically, in 1994 – the NFL actually moved the spot of the kickoff back yeah. five yards to make the play more exciting and more returns happen. Then later, ah, the nineties. Yeah, then <laughs> later they football. they changed it back to the thirty-five. I like, think, man, we're getting a lot of people hurt here. Yeah, in twenty eleven, they they made that change, and then obviously, you know, players are just 
you know, kickers are stronger now too, and they just at will can kick it out of the back of the end zone. I just can't help but think of all the players whose careers have been affected by the elimination of the kickoff. Mm -hmm. And and yet one of them has not retired, and his name is Cordell Patterson, and he is now a member of the Pittsburgh Steelers. (laughs) A two-year deal with Arthur that's Smith. That's the news story oh. is Cordell could have gone anywhere. And you should have been like, oh, sweet. Good for you, Patterson. Go get some more money with the new kickoff rule. That'll be exciting. But because he goes to Arthur Smith, when you're drafting Najee, when you're drafting Jalen Warren, or they're on your dynasty team, there's the, – the butt cheeks are a little tighter. Oh, A little Artie. bit. Oh, Artie. Uh, as a reminder of what we saw in Atlanta last year, um, carries inside the 10-yard line for Atlanta. You had Bijan with 10. Top Al- 10 NFL draft pick. Correct. Uh, Tyler Algier with – Fifth-round NFL draft pick. <laughs> with 10, and Patterson had five of his own, just vulturing those fancy touches. Um, oh. And he won't be unused. Can't wait. On off- Like, there's no way that you go through next season. You don't have a handful of these plays inside the five that go to Cordero Patterson. Yeah, either on an end-around or something creative or – He'll be involved in the in the receiving game. He'll be depth at wide receiver. He is actually a good weapon for a team. It's just Arthur's proven that he's willing to do whatever. Artie's done it again. I don't know what to think of the Steelers. I really don't. I don't we don't like Arthur, but Arthur the offensive coordinator was better than Arthur the head coach. Yeah. We don't really like Russ, but no. Russ is better than uh, in Kenny a structured Pickett. system is better than Kenny Pickett. We do kind of like Fields, obviously, for fantasy, but will he be able to produce at a level that gives him a job? I mean, it, it's a weird team. Yeah. And, no Deontay Johnson anymore. Van Jefferson's currently their wide receiver, too. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, Tomlin will make it all work. Uh, we have the NFL owners approving a new trade deadline, kicking it back a week. Nice. Fun. Reminds me of discussions in fantasy leagues. Yeah. Of, do you, Do you think then the that fantasy? Yeah. We did it. Line, we did move it back a week in our league. Do we a couple need to go years back ago. another week? Yeah. Do we got to stay ahead of them? I or see, yeah, maybe. Not, not not in our league of record. Okay. Yeah. Dynasty leagues. Let's push it back a week. Uh, on the same wavelength of Van Jefferson, the uh, the next signing for the Denver Broncos is Josh Reynolds. This those, will, have this anybody seen those it. two guys in the same place? <laughs> Josh Reynolds, two-year deal with Denver to be, I believe, their eighth mediocre wide receiver to join um, you know, Mims and Patrick and Sutton and Johnson. And there you go. Congratulations. I think they have little Jordan Humphrey, too. Uh, J.K. Dobbins cleared for football activities. We haven't heard a whisper about a future yeah. destination for Dobbins, but maybe there will be one soon. Coming off the Achilles injury in week one was devastating uh, when it happened. And I mean, hopefully, yeah. You hope, hope he gets another hopefully chance. Hopefully, he yeah he gets a team where he can try and recoup some value, and we get at, if you can get like eighty five percent of Dobbins what what he was, but I don't know. I mean, usually <laughs> I, it's it's all hope. Oh, yeah. It's all it's all hope and sadness because that was said with such sadness, resignation, and and with this injury, I mean, it, it's an it's, Achilles. It's usually yeah. a death knell for running backs. We've seen many more examples of basically the career being over or a guy not being able to come back cam Akers rushed back and that did you know didn't seem like it was a brilliant decision got injured again and then uh Deonta Foreman who's probably the best success story coming back from Achilles he took a couple years yeah before he was back back I so, feel like that's his future like the, yeah, the uh, Dobbins best case future is to be like a kind of a Foreman-esque situation yeah just a solid back in a couple years as a veteran backup yeah, and that's the bigger thing. Teams won't sign him to count on him. No. That's the problem. Impossible. Um, and then, uh, Jason, we were talking about this the other day because they had moved some money around. So I didn't think Dak was getting a long-term deal. The Cowboys have not offered Dak a contract extension. The player and the team have a mutual understanding of the situation as he enters a contract year. Jerry Jones said, we are where we are, locked and loaded for this year. I'm glad uh- they both understand because that would be really <laughs> awkward. Yeah, one if, of if was like I don't mind Dak playing on a contract year. No quarterback. I was talking to Mike about this. 
No quarterback out there should ever worry about long-term contracts. They're irrelevant. You want to franchise tag me? Franchise tag me. It's 100% guaranteed, and it does not matter if you get injured. As long as you're good. As Dak long, literally long, did this once. Yes. Dak did this. And he this. got hurt. Yeah. And he got the bag. Uh, Kirk Cousins just got the bag. He's dealing with Achilles. If you're a quarterback, if you're a proven quarterback, you can you could prom- don't force it. Just tempt fate. Absolutely, yeah. you don't need any. Uh, the Cousins longer is thirty five, right? Yeah, off of Achilles. Exactly. The okay. longer you go before signing your next contract, the more it's going to be every year. Yeah, yeah, and it's not like he's not getting paid for this year. So, all right, that is it for news and notes. Let's take a quick break, and um, we got some fun stuff in store coming up. Speaking of Dak, by the way, before we jump into our game drop here and uh, something that I believe Brooks has prepared for us. A couple things. I did look at my Dynasty startup rankings and like Dak is by far the oldest of the top 15. Like he's, but he's only 30, you know, it's like if you, I don't know where Cousins would be on your Dynasty startup quarterback rankings. I'm guessing 18, 19, 20 range. Mm-hmm. But yeah, like, around there, 15. Like that's where that's where that Richardson Dak situation comes to a head because Cousins just got paid a ton of money to be a quarterback at thirty five. So what? You tell me I could get four years of this Dak? I'd be really happy with that. That's, yeah, you would. That's four years to make a run in my league. So all right, let's jump in. I want to play a game. All right, I'm gonna throw it over to Brooksy. Brooksy, what do you got in store for us? We're playing some Who Am I? We're playing Who Am I? So you will have... Oh, Cool Judge is back. You oh, have got the, the backwards, back. oh, yeah. the backwards <laughs> snap is on. I'm in game show mode now. <laughs> you were, I was told I had needed to wear a suit for the, oh, for the I game see, time okay. episode. So. Looking good. All right. So here's how it's going to go. I'm going to read one clue at a time about who the mystery player is. Footballers, this is key. After each clue is revealed, don't guess your answer out loud. Instead, write them down out there. This way, people at home can play along. Okay. And and then also after each clue, you do have to verbally decide if you're locking your answer in, the written answer you have down. Okay. That means honesty, Jason. That means you being honest. I am on camera. I think they could see what I write down. So... Yeah, I've thought I know how to avoid. How about yeah. okay? Yeah. How about okay? okay I'll, be I'll be honest. Okay, I'll be honest. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I didn't hear an ascension to truth. <laughs> yeah, even All if right. you're locking your answer, you don't say it out loud. Just, just keep it written down. Yeah, don't guess, change it. You, don't worry, guys. <laughs> don't. Yeah, no, worry. we would never worry. All right, so um, let's get to it. Clue number one: I have finished outside the top thirty at my position. The last two seasons. Oh, okay. Okay, two I do, seasons. I do have a guess already. You have a guess? Wow. But I'm not locking. What? Okay. Clue number two. Last year, I led my team in rushing touchdowns, but not in total running back fantasy points. I unhave a guess. <laughs> okay. So uh, again. Yeah, oh. give us that clue again. Oh, I've got a, I've got a guess. Wait. No, I don't. The clue is last year I led my <laughs> team in rushing touchdowns, but not in total running back fantasy points. Oh boy. Outside the top thirty. I, I I'm not locking. No, I can't lock either. There's a trick here. I already feel it. Well, it's probably prepared by Brooks and Kyle, so tricks a plenty. So outside the top thirty, most rushing touchdowns, but not the number one fantasy running back on the team? Correct. Okay. Okay. Clue three. My team is vacating 220 opportunities at running back from 2023. What? 220 hmm. opportunities. Hmm. I mean, I have a dumb guess. Oh, wait. Wait. Last. Oh, God. Every. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I had it. I thought I had it, guys. I have a dumb guess, but I don't think it would be a Who Am I character. Is everybody available here? Yeah. Yeah. No one locking on that one, I'm right? I'm not locking. Uh, no. It stinks, though. I'd like to do it in three. Clue four. I was not drafted in the first round of the NFL draft. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's that's like kind of a weak clue. Yeah, that's that's that that's should be weak. like wait number one. Not vacating 220 opportunities at running back. I oh, I'm locking in my guess. You are. All yeah. right. 
Like uh, write I, it down. I, I'm like, I feel like I have no guesses. I'm locking it in. Led his team in rushing touchdowns. Didn't lead his team. I'm feeling great. Back fantasy points was You got yours? I, I, it's down and I'm locked. Fake 220. I don't feel as good. Ready for clue five? <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> All right. Clue five. Tell us his name. Clue five. <laughs> Give us the letters of his name. Like we said in the last one, he wasn't drafted in the first round of the NFL draft, but he's being drafted as a top 10 running back for this year in fantasy. Oh, my guess is not good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's being drafted in the top 10. In this year's draft. He was outside the top. Oh, 30? gosh darn it. Can I unlock? <laughs> nope. Oh, okay. I, I'm writing it down, but I know Unlocked. I'm wrong. Uh, okay. Wait, two years ago would that have happened? Oh, shoot. I said I was locked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I think I think I got it. I, okay, I've got it written down. i got it locked, but we'll see. I'm having a hard time. I'm enjoying you guys going back now and forth. Now I get why one of those clues mattered. Now I get why one of those clues better. I'm right. All right. What do you guys think it is? Oh, that yeah, was the last I, one. I don't have a That's guess. Go ahead. Uh, my clue is you Jonathan, Taylor Jonathan Taylor Thomas. Thomas. Yeah. I, I wrote, yeah. My, when I locked in, I was going Zamir White. Ah. Yeah, in the beginning, I. But I, it's it's got to be Jonathan Taylor. You are correct. Jonathan yeah, Taylor. that makes so much sense. The, the clue of I wasn't drafted in the NFL draft first round, I was like, that's so stupid. Most running backs are. But he but was he like supposed to be and was just outside. Okay. I was going way too deep. I, I was like my first – when I said I had a guess after round one, it was like – or after the second clue, I was like, is this Rico Dowdle or something? Dowdle was – Was he in your mind? Yes. Because well, Pollard after was clue departing, two, and he probably had more touchdowns than Pollard. But I do that Dowdle was just – that would be such a letdown. So much of the clues in that last question were unfortunately provided by Zach Moss. Yeah. And I don't, I don't appreciate that. Yeah, I thought he was your guy. Yeah, he's my dude. Yeah, I love oh, him now. Yeah, I just didn't like him then. You talking about superstar Zach Moss? Oh yeah, of the Cincinnati Bengals now, right? <laughs> For sure. Man, I rewatched the uh, the Rams. Uh, Jason, you rolled over and watched the end of it. The Rams Bengals Super Bowl, and you know it's first and or second and one, midfield. For the Bengals. On the move. On the move. And they give Is a this hand. this the They give a handout to Samaje P. Ryan. I do remember. And I just think to myself, like, <laughs> what are you doing? And he almost got it. Yeah. The, the line opened up and he got right up to it, but just didn't have, I don't know, the strength and size to push a couple like inches Like a Joe further. Mixon might oh, have. Oh, yeah. Joe Mixon definitely would have got that first down. All right. Well, hopefully those at home that played along were screaming at us the entire time because it took us a while. Uh, Rico Dowdle, not the answer. So, Zamir was the one you had put down? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah we failed. Uh, and we'll fail some more. Here we go. Some liar, liar, prepared by a devilish Kyle Borgannoni. Liar, liar, pants on fire. All right, this is basically two truths and a lie. I believe we've only done this one other time before. I think twice. Maybe twice. Yeah. Kyle... Kyle four times. Four times. Four oh, times? Okay, you know, yeah, somewhere between to one and <laughs> four. We've done this four times on the show? Wow. Mike, have you we won. Be, have one, we ever beat you? Mike did one yes. time. All right, round one, there are three rounds. I will read to you three statements. Two of them are true. One of them is a lie. And Kyle probably spent, I don't know, 80 hours trying to trip us up here. So we'll see. All right. Round one, the theme of round one is fantasy geriatrics. Here's, uh, here we go. After missing all of 2022, Jimmy Grandpa had four receiving touchdowns in 2023 at the ripe old age of 37. He has, I think that's what, like $400 for me? Uh, he has 15 <laughs> total receiving touchdowns over the last four years, the same number as Michael Pittman Jr.'s entire career. <laughs> I think that's that probably, that's got to be true. That sounds totally true. All right, number two here, washed up Kareem Hunt was sitting on his couch for the first two weeks of the 2023 NFL season. From week six on, he scored more rushing touchdowns than Aaron Jones and James Cook. James Cook's 2022 and 23 seasons combined. Oh, my goodness. 
That sounds right. He's got a nose for the end zone. Uh, yeah. Cook had very few. I don't know why he had I don't to know. take a shot at him. That one I'm not sure about. Okay. Uh, third one, 140 wide receivers in NFL history have totaled 100-plus receptions in a season. Old man Adam Thielen is the only one who had zero of them going for 35-plus yards. I don't care. I'm locking that one in as true. I agree completely <laughs> because I'm confident in the other two. And old man Thielen Wait, was Wait, you're confident awesome. in the other no, two? No, I'm saying, I'm that saying means... that one's true. Oh, no. You think I, that's the lie? I think he got downfield. Yeah, that, I'm going to lock that one in as the lie. He I... was so good to start the season. I can't imagine him not having one deep pass. Um, Well, it's a touchdown. Right? No. Oh, no. just a reception? Yeah, just it's... a 35-yard reception. I'm going to lock in the cream hunt one as the lie. Okay. Aaron Jones had more rushing touchdowns. Aaron Jones and James Cook. 2022 and 2023 combined. So four total four seasons. Four seasons. No, yeah, this, that does feel this, like the This is garbage to me. No, I but, already locked. Didn't, but, I feel like Jones had like he had such, like a two rushing touchdowns. Yeah, he had like two the year before. Right? What are you doing, Mike? Uh, I can't. I'm shocked if, if it's the Jimmy Grandpa one and Kyle is taking a shot at Michael Pittman Jr., that's gonna blow my mind. Mm. I'm gonna I'm going with Andy. I'm going the Cream Hunt one. All right, Kyle, what do you got? The lie is Adam Thielen. Uh, he you got did it, not sir. have a catch over thirty five, but other wide receivers have done it before. Oh perfect. Oh, I don't that care. Is, I don't care which direction. That's a terrible lie. I still got it. That's a terrible lie. Still So we're we're doing lies of one word technicality. Yeah, that's what oh, that man. that was. Okay, some, okay. Oh wow, Kyle. You know, <laughs> The interesting thing here to try to save this for the sake of our show is that those other two true facts were very interesting. I hope Kyle moves to the Midwest. <laughs> <laughs> Take that, Kyle. All right, the round two, hopefully not as dumb. Bad case of the runs. Oh, boy, that's not a great title. Uh, so far, not so good. All right, number one, Devon Achan had 103 total carries. In his rookie season. No, he had 102. <laughs> That's the lie. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, he now has many as many total runs of 40-plus yards as Red Reggie Bush had in his entire 10-year NFL career. Okay. Wow. Interesting. Okay. Interesting potential fact, potential lie. The second one, Derrick Henry's best run, 99 yards. Oh, man. And that his worst so run. Negative 12 yards in his career. Both occurred versus the Jags in the same game. That, I think so. That 99 so. yard run was unbelievable. And then the third one, Ravens 2023 rookie running back Keaton Mitchell did not register a carry until week nine and had a season ending the injury in week 14. Yet he had more 20 plus yard runs over the last three years than Alvin Kamara. Oh, no. Three years is what makes that one questionable, although I have watched a lot of Alvin Kamara, and that dude does not break free very often um, anymore. And most of his work is in the passing game. When you see him with a big play, it's usually a reception dump off he took. I, I'm going to lock that one in as the lie, though. I, I don't think that's true. Keith Mitchell, five weeks versus three years. Uh, I'm going to lock that one in. I am actually going to lock that one in as well. It is less about whether I believe that's believable or not versus the other two. I think the other two are true. Um, although if Devon Achan really had more total runs of 40-plus than Reggie Bush had in a 10-year career, that just gets me Bush had a lot of catches. Right? Not Fair. a lot of runs. A 40-yard right. run is hard. I, yeah, I mean, Achan's had a lot. Uh, Mike, what are you doing? I'm going to go that – the Derrick Henry's worst. I'm going to do the Derrick Henry one. I'm going to say they were different games. But the same team probably, yeah. knowing Kyle. All right, yeah. Kyle, which one's the lie? Mike, you know me too well. Oh, it's the, that exact thing. It is what I said. It's the same it's team. Against it's the just Jets. not in the same I, was, game. Was the minus, oh, man. Was the minus 12 this year? Uh, it wasn't this year. It okay. was 2017. Okay. Jason, what what are we doing here? We're, uh, Kyle is really – he's yeah. a devil. So nobody can beat Kyle now, but Mike and I can We're each tied. Yes. beat each other. Well, or we, we both could, eat yeah. it. Oh, we could tie with Andy, or we could uh, win the game 
over the opponent. Round three, fantasy footballers lore. <laughs> Through 10 years, the fantasy footballers had all of the following esteemed episode titles. Bum Bum Comfort. Yeah. Dingleberries. And Mike Poops Himself. I mean, that seems like us. Yeah, it seems okay. really, really good. Uh, fact number two, since the drop's debut in December 2020, Al Borland hit the Just Give Me a Kiss drop. Just give me a kiss! I knew that was coming. Yeah. I gave space and everything. Uh, for J.D. McKissick, more than the number of rush attempts <laughs> that J.D. McKissick how, actually had how is this possible? on the field from that time on. I think that's an amazing stat if it's true. That can't be true. And the third one, in the Biden administration, Jason Moore <laughs> has missed the fewest shows between footballers okay. hosts, and Mike Wright has never missed a waivers episode. <laughs> that seems, it seems, uh, that seems. You have to have missed a week in season. No. For a vacation or something. Not, not a waiver show. <laughs> That's the. Tuesday. Tuesday. Not a waiver show. According you can see to that being the, true. I'm, I'm, that one I'm going to leave as true. The way that he's doing, man, the J.D. McKissick one feels impossible. He's, he's opened up this world where we're now analyzing uh -huh. how dumb he is. Well, because, like, I know I've missed the fewest football shows between the hosts and I know, in the Biden administration. I know I haven't pooped myself. But, but I, have you? I think you've missed a waivers episode. Would that be something you cleared from your memory? It, it Through therapy? Be. It could be. But we all know that Jason has pooped himself. Yes. So you're saying that. The correct titles are probably Bum Bum Comfort, Dingleberries, and Jason Poops Himself. I'm just saying it's a possibility. But again, the headline there, Jason has pooped himself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is that still on our YouTube channel? Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean. I think it was a show after the show. It right? was. Yeah, it was a show after the show, which was a long, long time ago. Yeah, that was a- Before this studio. Before Spitballers. We it was kind would, of our Spitballers. Yeah, we, we would, would do a show after the show, just like 10 minutes on whatever- topic and sometimes and one and one story very time. specific episode we got an incredible story that neither of us had heard no it was great you we, gotta look we, it up we couldn't breathe um all right what are you locking in here i'm gonna lock in the uh i'm gonna lock in the the mike wright never missed a waivers episode so that's where i want to go but i do think that I I said, how is that possible uh, it feels long, impossible Bi that biden's he's only never... been there for three years though yeah Last three years. Um, oh, it's not lifetime. Okay, that's so. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna side with Mike's logic of Jason poops himself. I'm I'm gonna lock in the uh, the the names being incorrect. Where are you going, Andy? He I'm, already, yeah, oh, you, I'm, you I'm locking the, in okay, the hosts in one. Yeah, the Mike not missing a waiver. So now but I'm over two so far. Yeah, no, but now game theory. I can make sure that Jason and I tie, right? Or take a or, shot on winning, or all or, three of us, or all three tie. of us tie. I think that's, or you could go for the win. I'm going, for, yeah, but I don't like know the smooches. I, I think the smooches one is true because unfortunately okay. JD McKissick got hurt. He did hit the drop a lot, and then yeah, an owl would hit it every time he possibly could. I'm going to go with the the show titles. All right, what is the truth, Kyle? The lie is JD McKissick. It, he had a hundred rush attempts, and Al only hit it 48 times. Oh. The fact you know that is 49, 49 times. Okay. Um. Wait, is that what you lo locked in? No, I I went with you. Oh, good. So we we, we, we won. Yeah. yeah, we won. We won. Hey, 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 hey. Andy's the loser. <laughs> so that means that um, that means Mike has not missed a waivers episode under Biden. Correct. Yeah. Correct. That was that was the promise I gave after the election that you wouldn't miss a waivers episode. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Um, and we did have a show titled Mike Poops Himself. So yeah. You, yep. So you did poop yourself, Mike. No, I've probably it, uh, said I would have pooped myself. It probably was some big breaking news yeah. that you were upset about. What did well, Kyle? What in fact? What happened in that episode? Do you know? <laughs> I I have no memory okay. at all. But you can find it in the Mike show titles. Right, defecated on himself. <laughs> That's probably what happened. All right, quick break. Back with some mailbag. I thought he was going to say, oh, through nine years, the fantasy footballers had these titles, <laughs> not 10 years. All right, let's jump into the mailbag. How about we get a little Mike Plus? Oh, oh no, so it's, no, it is not Mike Plus. Oh, it's just there Brooksy. is one man this for is this the, job. This is the final 
time that you, <laughs> you want get, another one, huh? Yeah, you get to do yeah. it on camera. Just make and sure everything. it's good. It's your final chance. All right. Mailbag. Mailbag. <laughs> All right. Well, not well, everything can end with yeah, an exclamation point. Yeah, right. that was like a Game of Thrones finale. <laughs> oh, burn it down. <laughs> All right. Few questions for you before we shut things down here. YouTube question from at DJ Quill. Who changes the decor every episode and how is it decided what memorabilia will be used? That was That's a great question now. It was mostly <laughs> I don't know anymore. Brooksy. Uh, Brooksy, have you been training people uh, building up your keen eye and your decision making? I'll still have full control of that yes. okay. remotely oh wow i'll be giving giving direction of we like, got a robot what i, <laughs> what I want that's, that's exactly all i could think of is we have a really expensive robot <laughs> who just comes <laughs> there's just shattered jersey cases everywhere brooks brooks is famous for like we'll be like about to record something and then he'll like sprint in and change one player on the desk out or like a jersey out because it kind of fits the episode better like if you look back historically and if you had that eye to detail You'll be like, oh, the division they talked about. Yeah. All the players on the desk are that division. And that, you know, Papa Josh just can't do. All right, IG question from Chance Rice. Do you guys ever talk about doing live game commentary? We do talk about it. We've actually done it once. Yeah, we did, uh, did half a game. We did half lost? of the worst game that's ever been played on an NFL field, although um, it was the Denver Indianapolis Monday Night Football fart. Fest. Was it was it uh, was it Monday or Thursday, Kyle? Thursday, 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 Thursday yeah. night, and it was oh, it was man. that's the lie. <laughs> thank <laughs> thank goodness that we were doing it. Yes, because it was fun, and I think the Footland had a good time watching that game with us. And I that don't think they would have had fun watching that game. Was with, Jonathan Taylor out of that game? Everybody, or did he get hurt in the beginning? I believe like everybody was out. Everybody was, was part hurt. of it. Yeah, and then we had to watch Russ. But yeah, it, it's something we really enjoyed doing. It was a lot of fun. We're never going to be your average color commentator, play-by-play -play style in the booth. But uh, we, we have more fun from a fantasy perspective looking at calling games. Yeah, I, th I think there is something kind of original and fun about coming from that angle and that perspective. Like we have the... I think the complimentary type of analysis where we're watching for the same things you're watching mm -hmm. and we're reacting with like actual emotion and, um, you know, certainly no suits and ties like yeah. Brooks, Brooksy over there. And a good, healthy amount of bias. You know oh, what I mean? Yes. <laughs> yes. We're, we're, healthy we're, amount we're, of we're watching like you're watching. You'll yeah. know who we want to win. Yeah. You'll it's want us to did. have your players on our team. <laughs> 100% because who we want to do well are who's in our lineup. Uh, Caleb Hole says, after last year's collapse, do we worry about A.J. Brown and the Eagles? A I, little bit, yeah. Do you? Like, I think it's fair to have a little bit of concern, yes. The end of the year was really, really bad for him. But it was also off the heels of literally his greatest stretch of all time. One of the greatest stretches of all time for, what was it, 135 yards for it is, um, a bunch of consecutive yeah. games. The first half of last year, he was – maybe the best fantasy asset, and then it just completely fell apart. I'm not afraid because we have multiple years of him being great, multiple years of Hurts being great. Uh, yes, and I'm not questioning okay. your words. I What I am questioning is, is the like, – we've watched a lot of football, and we've seen special seasons, and then we see what happens. You know, we, there there is a drop-off that happens, whether it was Lamar's first MVP season and the, and the muddling years after before they got good again. Like, I – we don't know the Jason Kelsey and the tush push and how that'll affect things. Saquon touchdowns, rushing touchdowns. Like if last year, you know, if last year he has five or six rushing touchdowns instead of 15, it's a whole, it's a whole different ball game. So am I, I'm not really worried for fantasy. I'm not drafting players differently, what if, but I'm acknowledging the fact that the outcome, the NFL is hard. Different teams get really good. And then you have a bad game or two and or one offensive lineman goes down. Like, it's just, I'm not worried about A.J. Brown that much. So what if I, Jay, reminded you that through the first nine weeks, like A.J. Brown, there was another wide receiver who was very prolific, a fantasy superstar for years and years and years, 
And then he completely fell apart at the end of the year. And his name and would, you are worried about him. And his name is? Stephon Diggs. Ah, yes. It's almost a mirrored situation. The in production. Now you can say, well, there was the the, oh, the offensive coordinator change. The and, coordinator change and the age. I think those are the two things that s scare me because the coordinator changed at the exact moment that Diggs' utilization fell apart, and then he's also older. Whereas, obviously, you've got a coordinator You've got change. another coordinator change for but, the Eagles. But it's a coordinator change. Like, the coordinator change that happened with Buffalo happened, and then Diggs was bad, and then they re-signed that coordinator, so now we're like, I, I'm worried about it. There is a coordinator change for the Eagles, but we have yet to see Correct. how Kellen Moore will utilize him. So I'm less afraid of – like, it. either way, it could, it could get better, it could get worse, but we already know it got worse with Brady. Yeah, but they I mean he's sh they should figure it out, right? He's their so best player. So to answer best the wide question, receiver. do we worry Jason says no. I am not. Mike says I say it's it's okay to have a healthy just a tiny little bit of fear there. But he's a great player, so I would think he'll figure it out. Okay. Uh keeper question from Jason in Georgia, Drake London in the 5th or Achan in the 7th? Oh man. Love the show. I'm glad Jason doesn't sound weird anymore. <laughs> I'm going to take A-Chan in the seventh round. I take running back. Um, I think A-Chan goes ahead of Drake London anyways. So, yeah, that's where I'm going. A-Chan usually does go ahead of Drake London in drafts. They're both basically second-round picks. So if you can get a two-round value, yeah, I, I would lean A-Chan there. Same. They're both great. Yeah, I'll take A-Chan. All right, uh, Dan Rang says, do you view Rashad White as a dynasty player to trade before the NFL draft? I really don't. I don't really view him as a must get rid of. I'm not going into the draft. Fearful they brought back they brought back Chase Edmonds, which to me says, eh, we're kind of happy with what we got there, and we probably got other holes to fill. Yeah, I I don't look at them as a team. Like there's there's seven or eight teams where you just know going into the draft. It has to be a priority for running back, even though it's not a great running back season and they might get them on the fourth round or whatever. Um, I just don't look – I think the Buccaneers are really confident in White. So, obviously, if they draft a high one, it's going to hurt White. You've got to call your shot, and we don't know the future. Uh, we, I would predict that they don't spend day two capital on a running back. So, I'm not, I'm not unloading him. Now – in general, if I could capitalize on the dynasty, if I could capitalize on just the value of what an incredible season he had, and find a trade partner who thinks he's going to replicate that again, even if even if they they don't bring in another running back, sure, I'm I'm always open to capitalizing on great running back seasons. I think that's the the bigger question for me is I I think Rashad White is probably safe next year, should be good for fantasy. He'll get a whole bunch of targets. Baker is back. Baker likes throwing the ball to Rashad White, but if you have a third year then of – so Rashad White, 3.7 a carry rookie year, 3.6 last year. Still great for fantasy because he got everything and he catches the ball a ton. It just do you have a true long-term sustainability for him to be a fantasy running back to – I'd like them to fix the offensive line in the draft. That would make me feel really good about Rashad White. Yeah. Because I agree, if you have three underwhelming years between the tackles, maybe they start looking compliment. I don't. They yeah. obviously didn't find it last year. It, it's a good question. I like White because of the stability of Baker. You also have th he's last year was his second year, so this is he's got two more years under his rookie contract. So from a dynasty perspective, he's young. He looks like he's the dude that's going to get he's a bunch 25. of twenty uh, five dump offs. He's a great pass catcher. Yeah, so I'm I'm. But that's the question. If 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 he has another year on the ground, that where it's in, as inefficient as it was the last two years, I, then year four they I would say they definitely bring someone else in. Sure, but as of right now, this season going in, I don't think you should be seeking to unload him. I do have um, I do have a question. You know, just just with Brooks taking off from the studio and checking in with Deucer's Alley before we shut things down, Al, I. <laughs> I guess I'm just wondering, without Brooks here, you, you'll you be sitting over there with the betrayer. Yeah. And does that concern you just because, like, your job is somewhat dependent on trust, somebody, yeah, trust and, like, reliability, and you're sitting next to a man that just really you couldn't, you know, what's yeah. the old phrase? You can't uh, trust him as far as you can throw him or whatever it is? Right. 
I think at the end of the day, Josh did you a favor, right? Did he betray you or did he help you? You Look, want the ends ju they don't justify the means. <laughs> I overcame treachery. Also, Jeremy was a big part of that. I trade. know he was. I know <laughs> I you got two, nothing to do with it. two betrayers over there. All right, that is going to do it. Thank you for joining us. If you want to give Brooks some love, Twitter, where are you, Brooks? Brooks Carmine. Yeah, give him some love. We'll miss you, buddy. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.